Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock. Welcome to Watercolor Workshop. Today I'm going to demonstrate something a little different. Instead of painting an object directly, I'm going to do some of that, of course, but I'm also going to indicate the major part of the painting with shadows and textures. It's painting something by not painting something. I hope you find it interesting. The first step is to wet the paper down because I'm going to do a wet into wet sky. There are a few times when you don't do that, but that's pretty much a, a staple with watercolor. I like the blended clouds you get. So I will do first a nice wash of plain, clean water in the sky. And for this snow scene, I don't think I want a bunch of nice fluffy clouds. I want to change that up a little this time. I'm going to start with a nice light shade of pinkish red next to the horizon. And if that leads down into the tree line just a little bit, that's okay. I just want some of that nice bright color, nice and low in the sky. And next we'll take a little bit of ultramarine, mix that with just a tiny bit of phthalo, and we'll use something here, we always keep composition in mind. And this painting has some lines from the ground that will indicate up this way. So my clouds, I think, will streak down. In this sort of a fashion, we want a nice streaky sky. A sky does not have to be a profoundly busy part of your painting. Some paintings the sky has to be subtle. It's a, just a background. It's just a setting. And I'm going to put just a tiny bit of that red in here. And just that quick the sky will be finished. The sky is still rather wet. As long as I don't bring other things up into the sky right now, that's not a problem. So this is the decision time. Uh, you can work on any number of things next. While this is wet and the colors are still creeping and doing some nice things, I'm going to paint some shadows on the snow. This is the idea of not painting the snow, but painting something else altogether. So I'm going to take a color not too greatly different from the sky, and I'm using a nice big round brush. I don't want to run out of paint. And the paper at this point is dry down here at the bottom of the painting. And I know that this is going to be on the back side of this little hill. So I'm just going to wash in the shadows and that nice cool shadow area will define the top of this hill And if we wanted to add some other little shadows, blended shadows, just to add interest, we would put those in now. The sky is still rather wet. And because it's dried so much, I will get a little creeping in the sky, but now's a good time to put in some of the background 
trees. And that's just a little mixed paint from the palette. It's a mixture of brown and blue that just happens to be there. If I wanted a little more sunshine in the trees, I might hit in some little spots of burnt sienna and that warms or that adds a little warmth to a few of the trees, a little color. And if I spread a rounded out, a flat, a round brush, I can also indicate some of the nice little branches for the trees directly behind the house. And we'll let some sky come through. And that just indicates the mass of all those little tiny branches because we're not going to paint them all in. And finally, taking advantage still of that damp sky, I'll put a few shadows in. This is more of the leftover mixings of the palette, some darker blues. And we're taking advantage of the previous wet line in the paint. We're not painting a whole new line. And we just let these little colors mix together, let the brush do the work. I can just dab it in and uh, as the paint creeps and dries. I think it does a nice job of indicating that distant tree line. I think I'll work on a big weed pile that I would like going on right in this left corner. So I'm going to switch to a fairly wide bristled fan brush. When it comes to grasses and sometimes leaves, we can paint every little piece of grass in. That's effective. Looks good. It proves somewhat time consuming. So I'll pick out another brush that will do a lot of the work for me. And it's going to be rather wet. I've got the same grass color, but with a light touch, we'll take this fan brush and use it to paint in quite a bit of what looks like quite a bit of grass very quickly. Now while that's nice and wet, just to add a little variation in it, I'll use my round brush and I'll just throw in a couple of dark sprigs of grass like so. They won't be very sharply defined because they will fade and creep into the other wet paint, but that's perfectly okay at this point. We'll put some more in a little bit later. And it'll give us the illusion that we painted every last little piece of uh, grass into this painting. This particular passage with the nice wet colors gives us an opportunity to uh, take advantage of the watercolor paper for a technique we call scraping. Sometimes it's just a couple of minutes before that works and it's just a matter of balancing the pressure that you put on the paper 
and the paper being in just the right state for that to work. And again, it indicates some variation in the weeds. Now, with this grass painted in and the paper is, has reached a point where it may not be bone dry, but the wet on wet business is pretty much concluded, we can think about where we want to go next. And this is a, an imaginary scene. I didn't actually go out and photograph this. This was uh, something I put together to illustrate this, and it's sometimes fun to make up an actual subject. We get uh, artistic license to do pretty much whatever we want. Now the subject is going to be the barn and the farmhouse off to the left. So we can decide what we want to do with regard to color. I think it would be interesting to make this barn jump out at us. So we're going to go with a fairly dark color. Uh, a red barn may be cliche, but uh, I like that. And we have to keep in mind our light source. So in this painting, the light is going to be coming from this upper right side and drifting in. So we'll keep that in mind when it comes to adding our shadows. So we'll start with the front of the barn. And I use a flat brush. You could use a round here, but the flat just works for us. This is a red mixture with some burnt sienna. And I don't want any creeping going on in it, so I'll stay away from this just for a minute. But in order to do the roof, I will switch to another little flat brush with perhaps a little darker, if not a little drier technique. I'll flip the painting upside down and we'll put a few streaks on the roof. Dry brush is when you've got this partial brush stroke. It's not a nice wet passage. And you take advantage of the texture of the paper. And this gives us some rust streaks on the roof. And while we are working on the barn, I'll mix up a darker brown. And it's okay if it's contaminated with some of the other paint left on the palette. And we'll just go ahead and paint along on this back side. Now we can move to the farmhouse. We want the farmhouse to be obvious, but at this point I don't want it to overpower the red barn. So we'll go with a a lighter gray-green for its roof. Which will make it stand out. But we want to keep it in the background a little. And again, flat brush works well for these nice flat parts of the house. And if the house were actually white, like the snow, we can actually leave the forward part of the house completely white. All we have to do is the shady side, which will just grab a little bit of blue, keeping in mind that nice cool shadow. And we'll pick up fairly close, just under the house roof. And then we'll paint just the hint of some shadows on the front of the house here, under the roof, under the gable edge. And maybe a little shadow from the roof on the addition. We'll make that roof just a little darker. It's not quite where I want it. And I'll put just a little bit of that shadow in the roof since I'm close by. And the barn itself is still just a little on the wet side. Now this is a round brush that I can cut to a nice sharp point. And this, this time I've mashed the brush and wiggled it ever so 
slightly. I'll move that into the frame. Sometimes you can take the brush and just gently rock it and lift it. And you get a nice spiky little tip that works very well for distant tree limbs, distant weeds. If you happen to be painting animals, it's, it's handy for fur. And we will indicate just a few tree limbs there. And while that's in mind, maybe we'll paint some little distant uh, shrubs, trees, just behind this barn. And we'll bring those down just to that little hill line. We'll fill in the same way behind the house. This way it looks like there are some smaller trees, a little hedgerow perhaps back here by this barn. And of course now is the brush. The brush wants to come back to its natural sharp point, which is fine. Now we can just use that again for a few little details. And it's always okay to just grab this picture, turn it upside down, let that brush work for us. And I do like to bounce around if I want to throw in a few more weeds here to help develop that using the same brush. Nice thin edge. We'll paint right over top of some of the previous work. Helps bring it right to the foreground. This keeps us busy while the other paint dries. Some people are scared of watercolor because they feel when you put something down, it's here for good. You, you can't fix it. You can't make corrections. And to a degree, uh, there, that's true. We can fix some things, but we do want to be careful not to create a problem for us later. So that's why if I've got some paint up here that's wet, I do want to avoid that. If I were to touch it later and then touch the paper, I could print or smear that. And then I would have to start exploring some of my watercolor correction options. And we will talk about some of those options a little later, perhaps. Now it's time to add a little detail to the barn. I think the barn's dried now. And it will let me do some direct painting. The same technique that I mentioned earlier about mashing the brush and letting it come to a, a little scattered form on the tip can also be used in the case of something like this. If we draw a nice little straight line down, it can indicate things like parallel boards. There's no set place to go next. This is a matter of total personal preference. At this stage, we can work on this house, we could work on the trees, we can work on the background. In, in keeping with my idea of bringing the whole painting into focus, I will work on the house just a little later. For now, I will switch to a flat brush and I'm going to paint in some of these fence posts that will appear to come up from the farm. And I could paint them with a round brush, a very narrow brush, and go this way. But just to explore a different technique, I'm going to use the tip of the brush and paint the little pole in segments. And Using a little darker brown, I can get a little mini wet into wet action on that pole. It's not dry yet on the shadow side. The flat brush works good for 
painting little flat poles like that. And while the pole stands here nicely, we'll take a little round brush. And if you're not totally happy with one, you can add a little texture to it with that brush. We'll detail that, make it a little darker down near the snow. And as I mentioned about not painting snow, we'll just paint a shadow. Now this is late in the evening, perhaps, so shadows will be a little on the long side. So we'll just put some shadows from these poles. And we're going to paint a few weeds. Hard to trim around that fence post. We're going to even jump ahead and I'll paint some of the shadows in from the weeds. I know that they're going to come along here any second. And if there were footprints in the snow, for example, we might just indicate those lightly. Again, we're just painting shadows. There's not too much to paint in the snow. I'll go to another little sharp round brush and now I can paint in some of those weeds that would be growing around here. We'll even put a random sprig of weeds just showing up here and there. Very small back as we recede in the distance. And to make those effective, we'll just give each one a hint of a shadow. and maybe just a tiny bit of a little dark brown. For a touch of wire on that pole. Remember watercolor likes to dry lighter. So sometimes a wash or a passage that you were perfectly happy with when it's wet will show up lighter than you want. Not a problem. We'll just go back and hit that with a little more dark paint until we are happy with it. We'll make that shadow in the door a lot darker along with just a touch of the roof. And as I mentioned, now that leaves the house to deal with. We want to put a few details on the house. I went through my brush collection and I found just the right little brush to work on the house. It's another flat brush. This one is a number four, but it's less than a quarter of an inch in width. And we can do several things with the brush. It'll be great for little windows. We can use it to touch up the chimney. And I'm going to angle the paper just a little and darken the roof. I thought it needed just a touch more color. So this is just a little greener, perhaps, than the original paint. And we'll just touch those little roof shadows. And this little brush works really nice for painting in little things like window panes. As things go into the background, we also want to keep them a little lighter. We want to keep our darkest darks and our brightest whites right up here in the foreground to make this house recede. But I will use the little flat brush and we'll indicate some windows by just a touch. And that 
may be all we need. I'll take a little bit of the reddish color that I used for the barn. Indicate the highlight side of the chimney. I don't want to paint the shadow side of the chimney yet because that's just a little too wet and a very tiny wet into wet will result in one, one color. And I'll mix up a little of the odd colors on the palette, a little blue, a little brown. And it's time to take a small brush, little round, and we'll start putting in just a few of the major branches on these bigger trees just behind the house. And again, we don't have to paint every one. We'll just indicate the major ones. And to add interest behind the barn, I think we'll put a couple of tree branch forms right behind this barn. The house is drying along nicely. It needs just a couple of shadows, I think, to make it pop. Maybe I'll just do a couple of window touches. Break up the roof. And we'll see if that chimney will like the dark cap now. If I want to connect the big branches that I had painted with that other brushwork from before, I might just darken some of those, like so. And we're getting almost close to declaring this painting finished. What I will do is paint just a couple more shadows or darker areas into that horizon woods make that line a little cleaner and perhaps just a couple of little individual tree trunks they look pretty much just like little sticks at this distance And I want these weeds to be a little more pronounced. So now I will go back and get a nice wet loaded brush of yellow ochre. If you wanted to brighten it up, you could add a little cadmium yellow. And now I will paint just a few individual weeds And make sure that a few of them cross. We have a little odd, one in an odd direction every now and then. And if they creep up and cover up something else, that's fine. Looks very natural. I might be a little more careful with one or two just here so I can get the effect I want. We might even dry brush a few back in around the barn. And in a winter scene like this, it might be cliche, but if this paper is dry enough to let me get up in the sky and do this, when I started this painting, of course, I had this little thumbnail sketch. I indicated some little flights of geese. And I think that might add just the right little touch. Now the big question comes, where do you want to put the geese? If this is our subject and the sky comes down in this direction, leading our eye towards the farm, we might start just above the barn. And we'll put just a little flight, sort of in the direction of the clouds. We'll put a little straggler pair of geese there. And maybe way off in the distance, 
painting them even lighter and even smaller. They might be very hard to see here. We'll just put another scattered group. And if we're happy with the painting so far, then we can just simply sign off on it. And we've kept in mind our composition rules. If I want to touch anything else in here now, now's a good time just to make one or two little extra brush strokes. Remember, you can look it over and a little bit later if you decide to add something or refine something that's easy enough to do. There, that's a good example of painting something by not painting something directly. Painting shadows and textures works well with beach, sand pictures, snow, things of that nature. Hope you enjoyed the demonstration. Thanks for watching Watercolor Workshop on Pack 14. I'm Keith Whitelock. <music>